Hey, what's going on everybody? It's your boy James from What's Your Forte and today is going to be part one of the CTS Turbo M4 build. Again, special shout out to Euro Empire and the team and also a special shout out to CTS Turbo. Also a special shout out to them for sending me this dope shirt. It says too damn fast. So hopefully my M4 is going to be too damn fast once I finish this build. So now let's go ahead and get into part one of the series. Let's get it. All right, everyone. So as you can see right here, we are getting ready to start installing the CTS Turbo parts. So what you gotta do first, what we're gonna do first is go ahead and take off the front bumper. So as you can see right here, you got this weather stripping that's gonna come up and then you got these bolts right here that you gotta remove. We're gonna be removing all these bolts right up in here so you can take this front bumper off. Also, if you have um, headlight washers, you gotta remove those. You gotta get this out of the way too. All right, everyone, so like I said before, you gotta take the washers out. And as you can see right there, he's using a trim tool kit um, to uh, actually pry out the washer housing. right there just pops right out all right everyone so now since we got to take the front bumper off you want to go ahead and remove all the screws from the fender the under panel here and then also the inner fender here because you have to take this whole bumper off so you want to go ahead and remove all these screws everything trying to hold them in look as you can kind of see right here this is where you have to disconnect the sensors and also the camera you want to disconnect that because we got to pull the uh, bumper off and then also there's some screws up here the screw that connects the fender to the bumper there's a screw right underneath here that you're going to want to have to remove as well so that's going to connect these two so you want to remove that screw as well and then also make sure you disconnect the camera when you take the bumper off because you don't want any of that stuff attached because you don't want to rip it off because i'm pretty sure that's expensive to replace all right everyone so as you can see here this is a closer look of kind of what it looks like really behind the bumper you see you got this you got these plugs right here that are hooking up to the, the parking sensor and also the camera on the side if you do have the, the camera system set up if um, in your car so you definitely want to disconnect those before you go to pull the bumper off um, because you don't want to have that left connected and pull the bumper off. What cord is that? What is that to? Is that those to the sensors? Are, those are your, that's your, <laughs> your headlight washer system. Oh, wow. Okay. All right, everybody. So as you can see, the front bumper is off. We got these ducks here. So this would be a good time to get some cleaning done. As you can <laughs> see here, this dirt, grime, everywhere. So good job, good time to clean this while we have it off. And as you can see right here on this duck right here, you got your little M badge in here to let you know, remind you again that you bought an M car. This is your lens, right? This is yep. the, all this is covered by bumper. Mm -hmm. So you'll watch when you pick this up. It's going to kind of have to take the headlight and kind of just grab it a little bit. Kind of took it out at an angle. Like that. Yep. They do come out. Um, you don't have to remove the headlight. You just kind of have to uh, gently persuade it, I guess we'll say. <laughs> all right. All right, guys, so the bumper is officially off right there. And just to let you know, some more M badging. And if you can see right there, F8X. How many? Just in case you didn't remember when you're working on your car, you know. 
I mean, how many M badges do you need? And <laughs> everywhere. It's probably more for more so for the warehouse versus uh, versus the owner. But. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So also one thing, this right here, this sensor that was plugged right into here, as you can kind of see right there, this was your temperature sensor. So if you know in your dash, you see a little the temperature. This right here reads the temperature from right here, and that lets you know what your um, temperature is and what your car reading the temperature is. So if you ever wonder where the temperature is being read, it's red right here. So that's pretty cool. Whole lot of trash. <laughs> All right, as you guys can see right here, he had to take out that lower plastic piece right there and now we gotta take this bar out. Usually people will wrap this bar or paint it and do random stuff to it. I'm leaving mine black. So you have your heat exchanger for your water air intercooler right here. Then you have your actual radiator behind that. Mm -hmm. And then this is your oil cooler. Yep. This is one of the reasons the M cars, their oil temps just are so much more consistent. They don't get, you know, like your N54s on your 335s, those things are pretty skyrocket. Yeah, so they, get, they get pretty hot. They have that little one over there. And then I believe, I forget which one it is. One, this one is a DCT cooler, or that one is, and then the other one is actually an auxiliary radiator, meaning that it, again, is just all more, more cooling. Nothing wrong with that. That's why these things can go to the track and go around and freaking do lap after lap. So yeah, your little auxiliary heat exchanger right here. It tees, it tees in right there to the main heat exchanger in the front, so we're just gonna drain it right here. This is the lowest point. Okay. I can grab that. You grab a 90. Mm All right, guys, so as you can see right there, the fluid is draining. I never used it. I've heard it a lot. It's hilarious. Oh, yeah, fixing. I'm fixing to do it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was so confused when I first moved down here. I was like, you're fixing, you're fixing what? All right, guys, you so as you can see here, he's draining the fluid out of the heat exchanger, the stock heat exchanger. So you kind of take it off. You got, a, you got this piping right here. And then you got some right up here, so you have to unclip that from the stock unit. And then you kind of, it has a little holder right over here. And you kind of want to wedge it, move it that way. And then you can take it out. So you what, I guess uh, we should probably remove all those leaves. Yeah, definitely got to do some cleanup. Uh, there's a lot of, <laughs> a lot of leaves in here. It's pretty ridiculous. How many miles are on the St. James? It's only 30, 38,000? Yeah, that's, that's a lot for 38,000. That's a lot of, yeah. A lot of leaves for 38, All right, guys, so this is the stock unit right here, and this is the CTS unit. As you can see, it is a big, big difference. So as you can see here, the heat exchanger is almost installed. This, you can just see the bigger surface area you get right there with this CTS turbo unit. So we're gonna actually see how effective this is once we get everything going. All right, everyone, so I do wanna tell you one thing about this heat exchanger. As y'all can kind of see, I'm trying to catch it on camera. It is angled a little bit back that way. So the top part is angled a little bit further back than the bottom. And I think um, we just kind of looked at it and it's definitely due to clearance because you got to put this bar and this bracket back on the front of this and we just kind of test fitted it and we kind of see why they angled it backward and it's from all for fitment reasons so it has a functional reason on why it's angled backwards so if you do happen to pick up this heat exchanger and you're wondering why it's angled backwards it is for fitment reasons all right everyone so as you can see here we're starting to put everything back together so you kind of just want to do the reverse of everything we did to take everything off right so pretty simple 
harder one. So we got this lower section on. Um, it is a little tight right in this area on both sides. So you you all gonna have to put some elbow grease to kind of get that to fit. Um, and that's due just to the to the thickness and the, the, the just increased size of the CTS Turbo heat exchanger. So it is a little tight in here. So you do have to put some elbow grease in to get this to fit. But as you can see, it's not going nowhere. Alright everybody, so that's going to be part one of this five part series. We just installed a heat exchanger and everything is looking good man. Everything fit very well. I'll probably say give the fitment 9 out of 10. Like I did show that one part where it does, you have to put a little bit more elbow grease than the OEM unit. But everything else fit perfectly. Everything mounted right into the OEM parts. So like I said, that's gonna be, this is gonna be part one of the five part series. Make sure to stay tuned, like, subscribe, Hit that notification bell so you know when I post that next video for part two. Part two is going to include the intercooler, the charge pipes, and the J-pipe. So all the cooling and everything on the top part, all right? So like I said, like, subscribe, comment down below. Let me know what you think of this series. Let me know, let me know what you think of the build. And I'll holler at y'all later, man. Peace.